What is up guys, Jav here, back today jumping into Destiny. In today's video, we're going to show you how you can get your hands on the Buried Bloodline Exotic Sidearm, as well as a full guide to getting your hands on the Catalyst. So if you want to find out everything you need to get your hands on this incredible weapon, then be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below, and remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But without further delay guys, let's jump into the video. Now shortly after the launch of Season of the Wish, we had the Warlords Ruin, a brand new dungeon launch into the game. The Buried Bloodline Exotic Sidearm is the exclusive exotic only available from this dungeon, and this drops from the final boss as an RNG reward. Now as with previous dungeons, you can complete triumphs to increase your drop chance. So make sure to get those challenges done, but also run on each character to increase your chances of getting the exotic to drop throughout the course of the week. Now before even getting your hands on this exotic, you'll need to pick up a quest from Ikora over in the tower, and this is called In the Shadow of the Mountain. This quest has nine parts to it, can be very time consuming, and it's absolutely critical to even getting the catalyst. With that being said though, it does create incentive to rerun the dungeon, not just to earn the exotic itself, but to work your way through this quest. So once you have it, you'll be on one of the few final steps to getting your hands on the catalyst. Now, once you complete the dungeon for the first time, you'll be able to commune with an Amankara bone, which is one of 10 bones you need to commune with in this dungeon. This will also progress onto the next step of the In the Shadow of the Mountain quest, and this requires you to get 30 Dark Aether Tinctures, 3 Blighted Wishing Glasses, and also commune with 4 Amankara bones. Now, when it comes to Dark Aether Tinctures, these can be obtained by killing special Yellow Bar Screebs that are called Thieving Wretches. Now, these have a chance to spawn throughout the course of your dungeon run in one of three locations. These will either spawn at the very first bridge prior to the first encounter. The second Screeb can be found in the maze shortly after defeating the very first boss, with the third and final Screeb being found on the mountainside shortly after defeating the second boss. And these can drop up to 18 Dark Aether Tinctures at any one time. But naturally, you'll need to be very careful where you deal damage to these targets, as any Aether Tinctures that drop off the edge won't go to your Postmaster and will be lost. Now, the Thieving Wretches aren't the only source of Dark Aether Tinctures. You can, in fact, get these from communing with the Amankara Bones. You will get an additional 5 Dark Aether Tinctures for any Guardians you help locate any of the missing bones from their quest. It's another great incentive for players to help others, which will also progress not just your own quest, but anyone else in your fire team. Now, when it comes to Blighted Wishing Glass, this can be attained from completing encounters and looting the chest afterwards. The maximum you can get per run is three per completion. So for any steps that require more than that, you can either just farm the first encounter for any additional Blighted Glass that you need, and then finish off with any full completions if you're still chasing down any Dark Aether Tinctures. Now, as we said earlier in the video, there are 10 Amankara Bones in total, the first being after the final boss upon your first completion, leaving 9 additional bones to locate throughout this dungeon. There are 3 at level 1, 3 at level 2, and 3 at level 3 doors. Now, unlike in previous dungeons where you could collect all the collectibles in a single run, this will require at least three runs as you'll only be able to open all the level one doors on a single run, all the level two doors on a single run, finishing off with all the level three doors on your final run. Now, thankfully, the quest does provide descriptions on the locations of the Amankara Bones. But if you would still like a visual aid, we're going to quickly cover the locations to the missing nine, finally finishing up with how to get the catalyst. Now the very first bone can be found directly before the first boss. As you cross the bridge to the first fort, you'll see a door and by approaching it, you can remove the corruption, allowing you to gain access to your very first set of Amankara bones. Now next, after you escape the prison, you can continue forward by jumping through the ceiling to this firelit area. By working your way through and moving forward, you'll find another blocked door of corruption. And by removing this, you'll be able to collect your second set of Amankara bones. Now, your next set of bones can be found after the second encounter. You'll need to work your way across the outside of the mountain and make your way up until you see this area. Now, instead of taking a left and going to the giant taken orb, you can continue straight along the cliffside. And here you'll find a very small doorway leading to the next set of bones. This is the third and final corruption level one door. And behind that is your final set of Amankara bones for your initial run. 
Next, we have our fourth set of bones. Once again, after breaking out of the prison, you can make your way through the maze until you get to the massive crack in the side of the wall. This will take you to the next part of the maze. And here you can take a right, avoid some of the spike traps, and you'll find the first level two corruption door on the left hand side directly in front of you. This brings us on to the fifth location to the Amankara bones, which is where you have to cross into the Tempest through the portcullis and into the sewer mouth. Now this is before the second encounter and where you would normally head left to go into the sewers to progress your way through the dungeon. You in fact want to head right onto the other side and here you'll find another hidden doorway where you can remove the corruption to collect your fifth set of Amankara bones. Now the sixth set can be found after defeating the second boss. You'll need to move forward through the dungeon until you reach a group of enemies which you'll reach as you approach the outside area. Now before completely moving outside though you will see a small cubby. So if you are on the cliff edge then you've gone too far and will need to go back. And in here you'll find a level 2 door and your sixth set of Amankara bones. Now this brings us on to the level 3 doors and your seventh set. Now after the prison section you'll get to a point where you'll see a massive pile of barrels with a hole that we need to jump up and through the floor. Now from here we can jump through and exit the circle room and we can head to our left. And if you make your way down the hallway and dispel the corruption at the end, this will grant you access to your first set of level 3 Amankara bones. Now the 8th set can be found in a giant room with a huge taken orb. Now if you work your way through towards the very end where you have two hive wizards by taking them out you'll actually find the next set of Amankara bones almost directly below you. There is a hidden room so if you drop off and float down you'll be able to dispel the corruption on this level 3 door and gain access to your 8th set of bones. Now the ninth set can be found shortly after the Taken Blight room. There is a section where you have to jump around a smaller Taken Blight on the outside of the cliff edge. There is in fact a small hallway and if we make our way inside we'll find our final level 3 corruption door. Once again dispel this to gain access to your ninth Amankara bone. Now naturally you'll only be able to collect and commune with these bones once you reach those particular parts of the quest. So make sure to check your quest to make sure you know which bones that you need as well as how many dark ether tinctures and also blinded wishing glass as well. These vary and increase depending on which step of the quest that you're on. But if you are looking for a particular set of bones then hopefully this part of the video has been useful. Now to wrap up the quest though you do need to commune with Toland. You'll find him at the bottom of the spire prior to approaching the final boss. This will take you to a secret room. Now this will grant you a random piece of exotic armor and also the final step of the quest, which is to return to Ikora over in the tower to report your findings. Now, upon concluding that quest, if you already have the buried bloodlined exotic sidearm, you can now start working towards its catalyst. You do need to finish that quest first, otherwise the taken blights that we need to shoot will not appear in your runs. Now, with that quest out the way, there are three more small puzzles we need to finish in the Warlord's Ruin. Now, for each one of these, we'll need to find and shoot a blight this doesn't necessarily need to be with the bloodline itself now by shooting this blight this will give you a buff called imminent wish and spawn a number of darkness totems now to help identify which totems we need to activate you will find certain torches lit in this particular area now based on the order in which the torches are lit we need to activate the corresponding totems now as we said there are three puzzles in total and the very first one can be found in the prison itself. So after escaping the prisons, do not leave this area. You will in fact find one of the blights behind the gated door in the very corner of the room. Now in here, you'll also see three torches in the back. Now these correspond to the three darkness totems in the cells which are closest to this particular door and one in the very front. And this corresponds to the totem which is closest to the exit. The easiest way is if you look at those torches and rotate them 90 degrees, that is pretty much exactly the same layout as the room that we find ourselves in. So with those torches lit, we need to go activate the corresponding totems. Now you'll have as many attempts as you need to complete this. And once you've done it successfully, you'll see a prompt on screen saying an unspoken wish has been silenced. And if you have the buried bloodline equipped, you'll also hear the weapon click. 
If though you do do it incorrectly, it will state an unspoken wish persists and you'll have another attempt to complete it. Now the second puzzle can be found on the giant bridge with the portcullis prior to the ogre, which is the second major boss fight. First of all, you will need to clear the bridge of all the ads and upon successfully doing that, you can turn back around and if you look up to the left hand side of the other portcullis, you'll find another taken orb. And this will activate five torches on the outer circular section of this part of the castle. And these once again match the totems in the same order with the leftmost torch corresponding to the leftmost totem and so on and so forth. Once again, you'll need to activate the corresponding totem. And upon successfully doing so, this will complete the second part of the catalyst quest. Now this brings us on to the third and final puzzle which you'll find in the giant jump puzzle area shortly after the giant taken room. Now this is the same area as the third level 3 door which has the smaller taken blight. Now you'll find the last blight in the doorway down to your left and this will spawn four darkness totems. Now you'll find the four torches in the doorway straight across the chasm which is directly opposite where you first entered that area. Once again, these are orientated in the same way as the previous puzzle and we'll need to work left to right to activate the corresponding torches, which will allow us to complete the third and final puzzle. Now, upon completing this, you need to work your way through the dungeon and clear the massive group of Taken and Scorn. This will allow us to approach Toland once again. However, once returning to this room, there will be a boss we'll need to fight. Now, this is a wizard and to remove her shield, you'll need to use the same mechanic that you just did to activate the totems to remove her shield. There are four torches that will light and you'll need to activate the corresponding totems in this room which will remove her shield and allow you to deal damage. Now there are six totems that will spawn in this room so you will need to be mindful of the ones that you are activating but as long as you activate them correctly this will drop her shield allowing you to take her out and this will grant you the catalyst to the buried bloodline itself. Now the buried bloodline fires two tracking bolts that leech health from the target and rapid final blows with the weapon will also grant devour to the wielder. Now as for the catalyst when devour is active this weapon also weakens on hit. It's a very powerful catalyst makes the weapon even stronger and is well worth the effort once you get your hands on it. So there we have it guys a full and comprehensive guide on how to get your hands on the buried bloodlines catalyst. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content and if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2 then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump into the game as always guys and I will catch you all again very soon.